Welcome back to The Vocalist. If you're new here, my name is Bethany and I am a vocal coach. I've decided that all this week we are going to be revisiting singers I've only heard once before, starting with Laura Fabian. I previously heard her sing Je suis malade, and so today we are watching a performance of Adagio. Here we go. I'm going to go all the way back. <sighs> My mind is racing. Okay. Shame on me for taking this long to get back to her. I'm going to talk a lot throughout this like replay just because so many things are happening. Like I always love to read comments on videos before I watch them. And she, I'm not going to name names, but she is, um, Compared to another singer of the same generation who sort of, I think, I don't know in terms of popularity if you would say they were more popular, but um, in the U.S. they definitely were. And oh, golly, okay, I'm not saying names, so it's okay for me to say this. Everyone has their preferences when it comes to singers and what they do and what they achieve with their voices. I think... What sets her apart is that she has the chops to, you know, span a huge range and um, she's got like the grit in her sound that we associate with like pop singing at this time, but she does so much more with her voice than I think a lot of singers ever tried to do. Just so many colors. Ugh. yeah. Okay, here we go. <laughs> yodel that she incorporated like she she was in mix and then a little bit more in head and then yodeled between them it's like it's just so great I don't know where to find you. what I love here okay she started with the vocal fry when she's going down to those lower notes there's this common misconception that we have to really like push out low notes. And the fact is, is if you're pushing too much on your low notes, 
you're not allowing your chords to vibrate, which is why they don't come out. So allowing a little bit more breathiness, allowing a little bit of relaxation in, you know, your laryngeal muscles helps with those low notes. And so hers are just so full and lush and warm and just like, oh, it's like butter. Like they're just so comforting. Agility, like, okay, <laughs> I'm sorry, you can hear that little turn in there, but you can also, when she, the way she's like painting this text, even the way she says skin, I get, I guess for me, skin is not a really pretty word, but she makes it just the most gorgeous word and it fits the line, like, I feel you under my skin. It's like, oh, um, let me go back to that little turn in there. phrase like she played so much with her resonance and her placement like there were moments where it was a little bit more nasal a little bit brighter and then she backed it off and had a slightly more open pharyngeal sound like I could listen to that one line a million times build I love I'm gonna back it up again this build she gets a little bit more of that twang in there so that it's got just this little bit of edge this little bite to it as that we're getting to the chorus here Okay, I don't, I'm so sorry. I don't know this song. I don't know if I'm gonna hear that again. And I need to, so we're going back. Um, oh man. Those low notes are so captivating. I'm gonna go back even further. I love how you can actually see in her mouth, like look at how she uses her lips to sort of morph the sound just a little bit. She creates different colors using like her lips. If you sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Round. <laughs> if you round your lips, oftentimes you're going to get a, a slightly darker, richer sound, but she, oh, it's so good.
gosh, that was such a gorgeous example of mixed voice. You can hear, um, she's stretching that chest range, you know, using her thyroid muscle, her vocalis muscle. She's got like that thickness in her cords that gives her power in her sound, but you can hear a little bit more of that head resonance coming in as she gets higher. And so it's not thinner, it's just got this slightly lighter sound, but it's so minute compared to what she was doing before. So it blends beautifully. To all of that, I'm also gonna turn on my keyboard. I don't remember if it was a key change or just a really incredible tonal shift, but that moment where she was sustaining the note and then went even higher, I wasn't expecting it and it was very thrilling. I'm gonna try and find that, but we're just gonna, we're gonna go back. <laughs> Oh, that. I loved that. Watch her, like, talk about, oh, just performance brilliance. Like, the way she's sort of positioned her body to, like, create this gorgeous note. She's not messing with that. So it's a very, like, skillful switch from one hand to the next when she's, like, moving the mic. Okay, so that, that's a C sharp. Hold on, let me play that again. Okay, before I forget, three things I have to point out. First of all, 
no tongue tension. Throughout that entire performance, it was so lovely to just see her tongue nice and flat, a little raised in the back. It was just like a nice little poofy pillow. And it's just incredible to hear what singers can do with their voices when they just have no tension. But having no tension doesn't mean you're not invested, you're not passionate. And it was so fun to see how she was able to remain calm and yet still be so invested in the text. And then of course, in those musical interludes, she had opportunities to be more physical in her body, but she didn't let the two sort of um, interfere with her vocal production. The big thing I wanna talk about, so at the end, I think she got up to like an E, but that big money note was a C sharp, which I thought was going to be a lot higher. And this is like the golden rule I feel that a lot of singers are missing in that we're all trying to sing in the same key as, you know, that famous singer or that famous singer. And it's like, no, every voice, every singer, you've got like money notes. Like there are certain places in your voice where the sound is just so brilliant and so thrilling and it's based off of, you know, your technique, your anatomy, your voice, how you've trained, your life experiences, all of these things sort of culminate and create your voice. And so I loved, I absolutely loved hearing that note because it was so thrilling for me. And I would have, obviously I was thinking it was much higher, but it doesn't matter because it was just so thrilling. And that's what makes music. It's not a... Trust me, there are people in this world who can sing really high and, you know, the tone of their voice doesn't really resonate with me or, you know, the sound that they're achieving on those high notes doesn't really affect me. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It doesn't mean it can't affect someone else. But when a singer like picks the perfect key for a song, I just that that is a smart move. And and obviously, yes, she sang higher and has a huge range, but just creating such a thrilling performance and doing it so successfully. Ugh, so many things. Um, anywho, <laughs> that's it for today. If you made it this far, <laughs> thank you for watching with me and hopefully I will see you next time.